Hello, I would like to present to you the RF Kit N32. This is a long range high power Bluetooth development board. It is featuring a NRF52832 microcontroller with built in power amplifier and low noise amplifier. This practically means that you have a around 40 uh, times longer or higher power, uh, higher transmission power than a regular uh, Nordic semiconductor chipset. Um, the board itself is made Arduino friendly and to be uh, used as simply as possible. It is featuring a, a USB-C type uh, connector where you can program and debug your application code through that. Also there is a uh, USB to serial converter chipset which is used to communicate uh, to the microcontroller itself. It is, again, fully Arduino compatible, so it means that you can fully program it and debug it from the Arduino interface. There is a standardized Arduino connection scheme here, so you can use the regular Arduino uh, pin numbering uh, system uh, in order to interface the microcontroller. There is also three buttons. This one is for uh, resetting the microcontroller. These two are for application-specific purposes uh, whenever you're developing and debugging the board. Also, if you hold the reset button and uh, one of the other buttons, it can force the board into a DFU, a device firmware update mode, or over the air update mode. Also, you can erase the application firmware as well uh, through the combination of these buttons. Also, there is two LEDs on it, which can be used for application specific purposes as intended. Uh, the USB connection is featuring a, a ESD protection chipset, which is also allowing you to safely use the board without having to worry about uh, frying uh, the communication chip right there. Um, on the back side of the board, uh, specific attention has been paid to make this board as uh, user-friendly as possible. First of all, there is a, uh, a lookup table to identify which pins the Arduino compatible pins are connected to uh, on the Nordic chipset. Also, uh, if you pay attention, this board is completely flat on the back side. There is no parts poking out from it. Uh, this means that these pads can be used uh, if you want to use this board inside or, or on another PCB. You can practically surface mount it if you wish to do so. Of course, uh, these pins are using the standardized uh, spacing for pin headers, uh, such uh, it can be used in a breadboard, so it is fully breadboard compatible. Now, we need to take a look at why this board is special. So I have made uh, a little video where I will explain and show uh, the benefits of using this type of uh, chipset versus a normal uh, Nordic chipset. So I have a development project uh, I've been working on, uh, which is featuring uh, a, uh, the same type of Nordic semiconductor chipset, the NRF52832, but without the amplifier and low noise amplifier. And we're gonna put them side by side and take a look at what that really means when it comes to range and bandwidth. So here we go. All right, so let's do the comparison. On the left side, we have the RF Cat N32 with the amplifier, and on the right side, we have a non-amplified version of the same chipset. I have mounted both of these on top of my laptop. On the left side, we have the amplified one. On the right side, we have the non-amplified one. And uh, so here, we'll start to get the readings. And the readings are showing the throughput speed between the two development boards that were laying on the table and the one on my laptop. On the left side we have the amplified and on the right side we have the non-amplified. As we're going to be walking throughout our house we can see how the transmission speed between these two boards uh, will be affected uh, by the one the distance but also the reflections and the objects that can hinder the transmission. So here we're already seeing in a moment how the the transmission speed has basically halved on the non-amplified version. However, the amplified version is still maintaining a very good speed. Um, here we're gonna have a little intersection where we have multiple walls and, and quite a lot of reflections. And we can see that the speed on the non-amplified board has really started to, to take a, a really, really strong turn. Um, 
Already now we can see that the board that doesn't have the amplifier has already disconnected. However, the amplified one is going very strong. We're still above 100 kilobytes per second in transmission speed. Um, now we're going throughout a part of the house that has been built uh, quite many years ago and has a lot of uh, armature and uh, a lot of strong concrete walls. The wall that we're going to be going through now, or the door, uh, is a firewall uh, because there is a garage behind this, uh, th these doors or these walls. And still, even though we have a ton of concrete bricks and metal in the walls, we are still maintaining a very strong speed. Here at the end of the road, I can't really go much further. Uh, we have passed 26 meters, 85 feet, and we still have a 70 kilobyte per second speed. All right, so now I think it should be pretty clear that there is some specific advantages of using the RF CAT compared to non-amplified solutions. Of course, uh, if you have something that really requires very little power consumption uh, and has to transmit data quite often, then the RF CAT is not for you. However, if you have something that is uh, powered uh, or only like mains powered or only needs to transmit data uh, in, in rare occasions, then this one will still work very well. Uh, the amplifier chipsets are made in a special way that they only activate whenever you have a transmission uh, pulse that is incoming or a reception pulse that you have to listen to. Every time between that, there is no extra power consumption to speak of. Um, all this is handled by the code in the back end and it's not something you have to worry about whatsoever. So. Um, if you need a system where you need to transmit quite a lot of power in uh, over a longer distance in a smart home automation uh, setup, for example, uh, let's say you want to transmit some audio or, or something uh, like graphical data, for example, then uh, having a, a speed of, of a 50 to 100 kilobytes per second is, is quite a lot. Keep in mind that the transmission power of this thing is, is quite similar to a regular Wi-Fi router. So you can kind of make a, a simplified estimation that wherever your Wi-Fi has like the range that a normal Wi-Fi router has, this thing will have a very similar uh, range as well. Uh, that being said, Wi-Fi is intended for very high speed. Bluetooth, the protocol itself, is not made for that. However, we can still achieve uh, a 2 megabit per second approximately transmission speed, which results to this 150, 120 kilobytes a second that we're seeing here. Um, so this is pretty good for indoor use. It can also be used for outdoor use. Uh, let's say you want to have some uh, plant monitoring system or some gardening stuff or some stuff in the shed or whatever. Um, then, then this could be quite useful in, in that aspect because he, it doesn't really care about a couple of walls and some doors and some windows and whatnot. All right, I hope you found this video informative and entertaining. Uh, if you find a good use or need for this, head over to the Tindy store and, and pick one up. Uh, I'll put the link in the description in the bottom. Have a great day and see you around. Bye.